Hi, my name is Alexander Smith, and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems. Today, I'm going to show you the process of reverse engineering an object in SOLIDWORKS. The object I'd like to reverse engineer today is a brake pedal from my sim racing pedal set. Since it can be easily removed from the base, I figured I could reverse engineer the pedal in SOLIDWORKS, which would then allow me to 3D print copies of it, as well as make a modified version of the pedal to 3D print. Although the object I'll be designing is likely quite different from your own project, this video will serve as a general step-by-step -step tutorial for reverse engineering any object in SOLIDWORKS. All you need at your disposal is a camera, SOLIDWORKS, and a 3D printer. There will be five steps in the process that I will cover throughout this video, beginning with taking pictures of the object and eventually ending with 3D printing the completed model. If you want to skip to a certain step in the process, I've included timestamps in the description for each of them. Starting off, the first step in the process is to take the pictures of the object that you want to reverse engineer. Assuming you don't have a professional photography studio at your disposal, I'm going to cover some quick tips for setting up the shots. First, you should use a solid background which contrasts well with the object you are capturing. In my case, the petal is black, and so I wanted to use a solid white background which will work well for any non-white object. If you have any solid sheets of paper laying around, that would work perfectly. I did not, and so I improvised a bit here and used my solid white clothes dryer as a background instead. You should also make sure that the object is well lit. It's important to note that any light coming from directly above the object is going to be blocked by the camera while taking the pictures, and so it's nearly impossible to eliminate all shadows without professional lighting equipment. To get rid of most of the shadows in my pictures, I simply enabled my phone camera's flash, which produced decent results. Keep in mind here that using flash will cause glare on any reflective surfaces and could potentially change the appearance of the object and its background in the images. Now that our impromptu photography studio is set up, we're ready to take the pictures. For the pictures themselves, you want to come up with a plan for which profile shots you need to design the part. In the case of my pedal, I needed the top, bottom, front, and back profiles. For the pictures, you'll want to make sure that the object is standing up straight. Again, I had to improvise here as the pedal could not stand on its own for the left profile picture, so I used a folded up piece of paper towel to prop it up. You can also simply hold the part up with your free hand, although of course that means your fingers will appear in the photos. Next, you'll want to make sure that you're holding the camera parallel to the flat surface that the object is sitting on and you're pointing it directly at the object. It's difficult to get things perfect on your first try, so I recommend taking several pictures of each profile while moving your camera slightly in between each picture, so that later you can go through the pictures and select the ones that best capture the object's profiles. Finally, it is a good idea to edit and crop the images to remove as much of the background as you can. This will reduce the size of the image file, which in turn will reduce the size of the SOLIDWORKS file. Now that we've got our profile images, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is importing the profile images into SOLIDWORKS. First, we need to create a new SOLIDWORKS part file. Then, to insert the first picture into our part, we need to create a sketch on the plane that corresponds to that profile. I'll create a sketch on my front plane to insert my front profile image into. Once inside the sketch, I'll go to the Tools pull-down menu under Sketch Tools, and select the Sketch Picture tool. Then, browsing to the location where I've saved my profile pictures, I'll select the front profile image. Initially, it will place the full size image onto our sketch plane. To bring the entire image into view, I use Zoom to Fit. The next step is to use the Scale tool to properly scale and orient the image. The idea with the scale tool is to place it along a feature in the image that you can measure on the actual object using calipers or a ruler, and after inputting that measurement, SOLIDWORKS will scale the image to match it based on the length of the scale tool. The scale tool is also used to orient the image by placing the tool along a horizontal or vertical edge, and then using the scale tool to rotate the image, snapping it to the correct orientation. Ideally, we would use the same feature in the image for both the scaling and rotating. However, in the case of my pedal, that just isn't feasible, so I'm going to have to use the scale tool twice. First, 
I place the scale tool along the horizontal edge of the rib in the image, which I will use to orient it. SolidWorks requires us to input a value here in order to set the scaling tool, so I use an arbitrary value because I'm going to rescale the image in the next step anyways. Next, I'll drag the end of the scale tool and rotate it until it snaps to the horizontal reference. Now that the image is properly oriented, I can reuse the scale tool to properly scale it. But first, the scale tool must be reset by clearing and rechecking the Enable Scale Tool box in the Property Manager. Next, I'll place the scale tool along the full length of the pedal at the same points as my calipers were touching the pedal when I took my measurement. Then, inputting the measured dimension of 110 millimeters, the image is now properly scaled. As a final step, I'll move the image so that the endpoint of the scale tool sits directly on the origin, and I'll hit OK to save the sketch picture. Before moving on to the next profile image, I'm first going to sketch a construction line directly along the scale tool line and dimension it to have the exact same length. And because the measurement I'm going to use to scale the top profile view of the pedal is the overall horizontal length, I'll also grab the horizontal length dimension of this construction line and copy that value of that dimension to use it later. I'm all done in the front profile sketch, so I'll exit it and give it a name. Next up, I want to insert my top profile view, so I'll do so on a new sketch on my top plane. The process for the top profile is the same as for the front profile. First, I place the scale tool along this vertical edge of the pedal, and since the edge I'm placing the tool on is so close to vertical already, when placing the second point of the scale tool, SolidWorks tries to snap it to the vertical reference, which I do not want. To avoid this, I simply hold control on my keyboard when placing the point, and it bypasses it. Then, after inputting an arbitrary value and rotating the sketch to the vertical reference, I reset the scale tool and use it to define the overall horizontal length along the center line of the pedal. For the measurement input, I simply paste the value I copied from the previous sketch, which ensures that the pedal will be the exact same length in each of the images. Then, I locate the sketch picture so that the sketch tool endpoint is on the origin. And that's basically the entire process for placing sketch pictures. To avoid being too repetitive, I'll skip over the addition of the bottom and back profile images. Now that we've got all of our images inserted as sketch pictures, we can move on to the next step, which is tracing, extruding, and combining each profile. To trace the profiles, the best practice is going to be to create a new sketch on the same plane as the profile you want to trace, separate from the sketch that contains the sketch picture. I'd like to create the front profile first, and so I'll open a sketch on the front plane. Now I'll begin tracing out the shape of the pedal profile. If the profile you're tracing can be done using lines and arcs, it is best to do so. However, in the case of my pedal profile, the curves are far too organic for analytical tools and so I must use a spline instead. For those who aren't familiar with creating splines in SolidWorks, I'll put a link to another video showing you how in the description. After some tweaking, my spline matches up to the profile pretty well, so I'll extrude it. The extrusion depth here is arbitrary, what actually matters is that the extrusion covers the entirety of the top profile so that when I extrude that top profile, the bodies intersect one another. Next, I'll do the top profile sketch. In the case of my pedal, the top profile can actually be defined using tangent lines and arcs, and so that's how I'll trace it. With my lines and arcs placed, I'll now convert the center line from the front profile sketch and add a coincident relation between its endpoint and my rightmost vertical line. Then I'll add any known dimensions to the sketch. Finally, I'll go around my sketch, moving the lines and arcs to match the image and fixing each endpoint once I'm happy with its placement. 
you can see that some of the edges don't actually line up with my sketch. And this is due to perspective. Because the pedal has a curve to it, as shown in the front profile image, the leftmost area of the pedal is actually further away from the camera than the right area. And so, even though I know for a fact that the top and bottom edges of the pedal are straight, horizontal edges, they appear to be curved in that top profile image. This issue is virtually unavoidable without a professional setup, so it's important that we trust the measurements more than the image itself when perspective is in play. Now that I've finished tracing the top profile, I'll extrude it with a through-all end condition in both directions, ensuring that it fully intersects with the existing body. Since I will be combining the common volume of the two bodies, it's important that merge result is cleared. Now that I've got the two separate bodies, which define two different profiles of the pedal, I'll use the combine tool with a common operation to pull out the common volume, leaving me with the basic 3D shape of the pedal. I can now compare the single solid body to the front and top profile images. Satisfied with how it looks, I'll move on to the next step, which is adding any additional details and features to the model. Up until this point in the video, all of the steps that I've covered are basically the exact same steps you will have to complete in order to reverse engineer any object in SOLIDWORKS. This next step, however, is going to be unique to the object you are modeling, and so I'm going to speed up the video footage as I go through my features, because it is very unlikely that these exact features are going to apply to your project. If you wanted to learn more about a specific feature or tool that I use in this next portion, you'll be able to find a video on this channel which will cover it in its entirety. First, to create the elliptical pockets on the top surface of the model, I sketch an ellipse and use a linear sketch pattern to create the required instances. In order to ensure the spacing is perfect along the y-axis direction, I measure the distance from the center of the ellipse to the center line in the sketch and use that as my direction to spacing value. All of the other dimensions you see here were simply measured using calipers. After selecting two of the instances to skip, I create an extruded cut starting from the top surface to add the pockets. Next, I want to add the straight slot cuts on the top surface of the pedal. This part was easy. All I had to do was use the straight slot sketch tool and measure out some dimensions using my calipers, and once again extrude a cut starting from the top surface of the pedal, and the slots were finished. To finish the top surface, I'd like to add the two countersunk mounting holes. However, the pedal actually has two cylindrical bosses on its underside, which are used to both align the screws with the nuts in the base, and act as a spacer between the nuts and the screws so that they can be properly mounted. So I'll first create the cylindrical bosses on the underside, which I locate using measured dimensions as opposed to the image itself. This is because, once again, the image suffers from perspective, and these cylindrical bosses are crucial to get right. Any slip-up while locating the cylinders would mean the pedal cannot be mounted to the base, rendering it useless. I then use the center points of the bosses as my placement locations for the holes in the hole wizard tool. Because the top surface of the pedal is curved, and the direction of the holes we want is not perpendicular to that curved surface, I must use an alternative method to create the countersunk holes. In the hole wizard, I add them as standard holes on the bottom surface of the two cylinders, then with a through all end condition, I add a far side countersink, which of course will be applied to the top surface. As a last step, I add hole line chamfers to complete the countersinks. To hollow out the underside of the pedal, I use a shell feature with the measured wall thickness and move that shell feature above the cuts and extrusions in my design tree so that they are not included in the shell. And that's the top surface of the pedal completed. I will now shift my focus to the underside of the pedal, where the first feature I'd like to add is the long ribs, which I will add using rectangular sketches and an extruded boss on the top plane. Then, to shape the profile of each rib, I use the front and back profile images to trace the rough shape Then using relations, I dial it in and extrude a cut for each of the three rib profiles. Then I add two of the three short rib sections using a rib feature, 
And the third short rib I add using an extruded boss because the direction of the rib's extrusion is not normal or parallel to the sketch plane, meaning I cannot create it using a rib feature. Finally, I add the triangular gusset features to the two short rib sections using boss extrusions. As a final step in the modeling process for my pedal, I added a small fillet to the top edges of all the pockets, ensuring they aren't sharp, and I also added a fillet inside the pockets to more accurately match the real world object. Now, let's take one final look at those profile images, ensuring that we're happy with the finished model. Everything looks good to me, so now we finally come to the last step in the process, which is 3D printing the completed model. For this step, you have two main options. You can either print the model directly from SolidWorks using the Print 3D tool in the File pull-down menu, or if you prefer to use standalone software for slicing and printing, you can simply save the model as an STL file and it's ready to be printed. And that's going to be the end of this video, where I cover the step-by-step -step process of reverse engineering an object in SolidWorks. With the knowledge you now have, you are well equipped to take on a reverse engineering project of your own and start printing right away. Thanks for watching.